As I'm sure many of you know, Adobe just gave us the 2015 update to the Creative Cloud, including updates to Adobe Muse. And in my previous video, in one of my two previous videos, I outlined uh, my top five favorite new features. And I touched on one of those features, but in a way that left the feature a bit unappreciated. And uh, one of you out there, named Milad, left me an awesome comment and uh, pointed out another way to take advantage of this feature and this is the auto light box feature uh, my head was kind of in a different place at that time I was thinking about photo slideshows and I was thinking about this feature automatically starting a photo slideshow which you know I wasn't super interested in at that time but uh, Milad pointed out that this could be used uh, to show information. It could be used more as a composition and less as a slideshow feature. So in this case it could be used to capture someone to your mailing list uh, or be dismissed uh, if they've already subscribed to your mailing list or if they're not interested. Uh, which I mean we've all seen on a countless number of websites. It's kind of a popular thing to do. So before we continue uh, just know that uh, this is very annoying for people who are not interested in subscribing to your mailing list. In fact, uh, even if they are, they might be interested in getting to the content, and this might still annoy them, even if they love you to death. And that's why I haven't included a feature like this on museresources.com. I don't want to annoy you guys, especially being that a lot of you are frequent visitors to the site. So uh, I can recommend using this feature on maybe the home page of your website, but not on every page of your website. Uh, so the first thing to look at is the the way this relates to the update, the new feature itself. Uh, this is a lightbox composition, and we're going to build this together in a moment, but uh, if we go to the flyout menu here, uh, there is this new checkbox that says auto lightbox, and that means that it's going to come up automatically when the page loads without someone ha having to click a thumbnail. Let me preview this in the browser again real quick, uh, speaking of thumbnail, because when I close this, there is no thumbnail, and that's part of what this tutorial is all about. Uh, there isn't a place for me to click and uh, and call that up on the screen and uh, that's up to us to to make that happen so I'm going to go back to Adobe Muse and show you guys how to build this uh, first things first I don't recommend putting this together in the subscribe in in the composition in the light box itself uh, and what I mean by that is uh, this composition here I can click to select I can click again to get to the container inside, the target container, and then I can click again to get inside the design container within that, and then I can click again to get to a design element. It takes four clicks to get inside. Uh, so we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to design this uh, just on a blank page, and then we're going to copy and paste it into the Lightbox widget, because uh, that's just going to save us a lot of headache. So I'm going to go to a blank page. I recommend that even if your website is fully fleshed out, that you create a blank page for yourself, uh, just to give yourself a, an open space to be designing and not have to worry about layers and things like that. Uh, now the first thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle to simulate that space of that light box, and uh, I'm just going to drag out a little box, and then I'm going to go over to transform here, and I'm going to make this uh, 620 by 465. That's approximately the size of a default light box when you first create the lightbox widget. You can make this bigger, you can make this smaller, totally up to you. I'm just going to stick with uh, close to the default size so that way um, we don't have to do any extra work. Uh, but feel free to put in that effort if you'd like. So now that I've got this box created, this is going to serve to simulate the background of the lightbox. We're not actually going to be bringing this with us, uh, but I do want to be able to see it, so I'm just going to give it a color. Uh, my recommendation here, this is actually kind of neat, you might have several elements within this lightbox that you want to be the same color. Uh, for example, if we go back, um, my X button, little X button up here, is the same color as the background here. Uh, if you want to change that, there's a really neat trick that you guys might, may have caught in a previous tutorial. Uh, and that's that if you choose a color, let me go ahead and make, uh, let's, do, let's do a custom blue color here. And let's say I fiddle with this color and I make myself a custom blue color here. Um, cool it off a little bit or warm it up a little bit. And uh, now I want to save that color because I want to be able to apply that color to the X that's going to be in the top right corner. Um, I'm going to click the new color swatch button here to save that, and all I want to do is hit OK to save it, and it adds it to my color swatches. Uh, now you might be thinking, okay, neat, that'll save me time, I won't have to go and try to pick out the same color again, but I could just use the eyedropper, right? The trick is that if you apply this to another element, say you apply it to a hundred different elements, you apply it on different pages all over the place, you can come back here and you can double click on the swatch and you can make a change and click OK 
and everywhere that you've used that color swatch will change to the new color. It's one of the coolest tricks in Adobe Muse for saving time with your design. I mean that, really, one of the coolest tricks. So save your color swatch and use that save swatch. Really easy to make a change later. Cool. Uh, we're also not going to be designing the close button because we're going to have to do that once we create the lightbox widget. So uh, if you guys see me leave that out, uh, that's because we're supposed to leave it out. We have to create that later. Cool. So now that I've got my little design canvas here, I've got an SVG icon on my desktop. And if you guys are looking to get some icons into Adobe Muse, go get the icon mega pack from museresources.com. It's got 458 different icons to choose from, just like this. Uh, and this is an SVG file. The icon mega pack uh, vector edition is full of SVG files, which are infinitely scalable and don't lose quality. Really cool. All right. So now that I've got this in there, uh, let me even make it a little bit bigger, stress the point that they're infinitely scalable. Cool. Now that I've got this in there, I can do a text box, throw a little text box in there, and we'll say subscribe and uh, stay informed. <laughs> we won't spam you. Honest. All right. So now I've got a few paragraph styles saved, but you can style this text however you want. That's going to be my heading. This is going to be my subheading. Here we go, and now we're ready to drop in the form in order to be able to capture people's uh, email addresses. So I'm going to go back to the widgets library. I'm going to go to simple contact. It's a simple contact form for capturing all kinds of information. Uh, I don't want to capture all that, so I'm going to click and I'm going to delete name and I'm going to delete message. We don't need either one of those. We just need their email address and we need for them to be able to click submit. So I'm going to kind of rearrange things here a little bit and submit I'm going to say subscribe because that's what they're doing that is the call to action so to speak and here I don't need this label here I'll click in there twice and delete that label uh, I will also center up the text and so on and so forth and uh, one thing to keep in mind here is uh, this input field here on the form uh, you probably have discovered that you can change the size of it you could also play with the text uh, there are a number of uh, visual attributes you can change, the fill color, the stroke, the text color, all that good stuff. But don't forget about the different states that there are. Uh, it looks one way if it's empty. It looks another way if something's been typed into it. It looks another way if your cursor rolls over it. It looks another way if you tab into it with the keyboard. And it looks another way if you've hit subscribe or submit and an error has occurred. So make sure to style all of these. And what I like to do, this is not a rule. But what I like to do is I like to trash the states that I haven't designed yet. So that way nothing exists that I haven't created. And I'll start on empty. And based on empty, it will create the rest, which I can then go and modify. And what I mean by that is if you trash all of these, and then, for example, I round the corners here. And let's say I make those corners super rounded like a pill button. Now when I go to these other ones, it has those very same attributes. There are no surprises. That's why I trash them. I don't want any surprises. I don't want to forget to modify something and then it does something weird on me that I didn't know about. Uh, so I like to trash all those first. And then you can go and you can build them back in. So non-empty, I usually make the text uh, a bit stronger, a bit higher contrast, etc., etc. So it's easier to read. So let's fast forward. I've got my styled uh, box. It's not really the functional light box yet, but it's my styled stuff that I want to get into that light box. So now that we've come along this far, we are pretty much ready to grab this stuff. You could group it together or not group it together. We're ready to copy it so that we can paste it into a light box. So I'm going to select these things. I'm going to hold the shift key so I can select all three of my elements here. And I'm going to hit command C for copy, which is control C on a PC. And now we can go and build our light box. So I've got another blank page. You can do this on the same page that you've been working on the whole time. Uh, personally, I like to create a new blank page so I'm not uh, jumbling things up and overlapping things. Uh, it kind of keeps my workspace clean. So now we're ready to add in a blank light box. And that's going to be found on the widgets library. Not the library, but the widgets library. There are two different things. Libraries where you find widgets, like the ones you download from museresources.com. Widgets library is all the built-in stuff. That's where we got the uh, contact form. That's also where you'll find a group called Compositions, a little folder called Compositions. And in there, you'll find Lightbox Display. So go ahead and drag that onto the page. 
It's going to be a big unwieldy thing, but we're going to scoot it toward the middle here. And I've got the resolution of my screen turned down a bit. Uh, so what you'll find is things might not look right on my screen. They might look different on your screen. They might fit a whole lot better. Uh, <laughs> everything's jumbo on my screen. That's the bottom line. They, they shouldn't be quite so jumbo on your screen. Cool. So now that we've got this dropped in there, it wants us to do three different slides. And uh, in this case, we're just doing one static slide that's going to present the information, present the uh, form for people to sign up. So I'm going to click on this third trigger here, delete it with the delete key. I'm going to click on the second trigger, delete it with the delete key. And I'm going to click on this third trigger here. And I'm going to immediately go up to these states and start trashing them, just like we did with the form. Make sure all these states are trashed. And I want to arrive at the normal version of this button, and I want to get rid of the fill. I want the fill color to be the white box with the line slashed through it. And I want the stroke to be the same thing with the line slashed through it. You could also make this teeny tiny so people don't click it on accident. Uh, but the bottom line is it, you just want this to be out of the way. You can even scoot it up and off of the page so no one can click on it by accident. Uh, that will trigger this to pop back up again. And you really don't want it to be there once it's gone. Once it's gone, it's gone. So at least for our purposes, that's how we're using it essentially. So now that that's out of the way, this whole area here, it doesn't matter where this is on your screen. It's going to center itself on the screen when the light box appears in the browser. So you don't have to worry about centering it perfectly or anything like that. You do want to center your content respectively inside the box, but the box itself you don't have to worry so much about. So let's start looking at some settings here. I'm going to click again on this middle area so I get my blue circle here in the top right. I'm going to click over to it and I don't need previous, I don't need next. It's not a slideshow. I do however want auto light box. That is something that I want. So I'm going to turn on the auto light box feature that makes this all work. And lastly, I mean, none of these other settings really matter too much because we're not going from slide to slide to slide. Uh, you may want to turn off enable swipe. I imagine that could create some weirdness on uh, touchscreen devices since this isn't so much going to be an interactive uh, slideshow again. So really just auto lightbox is the only thing we want to worry about. And I like to have the close button. The reason you can disable the close button is because it is possible to click outside of the lightbox and have the lightbox disappear. Uh, but I like to have a close button because not everyone is that savvy to how these light boxes work. Not all your viewers will understand. So let's jump back in here and let's delete this text box at the bottom. That was not part of my design. I don't want that. And let's take a look at the close button up here. I'm going to nudge it down and in a little bit. I just use shift and the arrow keys to go 10 pixels at a time down and over 20 total pixels. And now I'm going to round this off. I'm going to make this a circle. Uh, by doing the rounded corners up here just like we did with our pill button and turning up the corner radius and you can't go too high uh, as long as you go up to the point that it turns into a circle you're good I'll nudge that X up a little and I'm gonna start by taking that X and making it let me go to the text panel here because it is just text I'm gonna make it that blue color that I created before I'm also gonna grab the circle which is a little tricky to grab because it's a separate part there and I'm going to go and delete the states for it, just like we did earlier, because it does have a bunch of states by default. And the fill color, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do like a dark gray. And then my rollover, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker, as if it's being pushed in when your cursor rolls over it, and it's getting less light. That's kind of the theory behind that. And then mouse down when it's clicked, it's like you're pushing it in further, so I want it to get even darker. I'll just make it go black. And you can make these whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. I just want normal rollover and mouse down to get progressively uh, more pressed in appearance. So cool. Now I've got my little X there. It, it's also the appearance of that X is also based on the font that's chosen. So if you want it to be a more traditional and modern X, you could do a font like Helvetica. That's uh, called a sans serif font. It doesn't have those fancy little feet on the X at the top and the bottom. It's got it's got straight lines, just totally straight lines. Uh, I'm going to preview this in the browser real quick just to make sure that that's aligned properly because see how the alignment shifts? The alignment does tend to shift on the uh, text there. So let me go up two nudges and it's still a little too high. I'll go down one and that should be a happy medium. And if I wanted to, I could fiddle with the size and position all day, uh, but I don't want to do that. I want to continue with you guys. So the next two things I want to point out, the inside of this container is filled with a solid color. And uh, in my case, my design had that blue color. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to switch my fill to that blue color. 
but you'll also notice this border around it and you may have noticed the border around it when I first showed you guys and then previewed my design in the browser and that border is not a border it's actually representing the fill in the window that's covering up your web page so if I preview this in the browser again see this dark that's all around it it's not a, it's a big huge border that's filling the whole browser here uh, you have control over that it's the coolest thing you can actually change the appearance of that uh, both in color and opacity by default it's black and it's 90 percent opaque I'm gonna bump that down a little bit I'm gonna go to 80 and instead of being black uh, I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit and I'm also gonna make the hue a little bit blue and cool it off a bit so rather than being a straight black color it's going to be uh, a bluish cool dark gray let's preview that in the browser and see how that works alright it's a bit more gray than I wanted it to be uh, but you get the point we can go back in there and we can fiddle with the saturation we can fiddle with the opacity and we can make it look exactly how we want to there we go that's a little bit better a little bit darker deeper more saturated uh, it will look different on top of content so I can even go and just practice by copying and pasting this let me delete this one the finished one uh, you can even go and practice by copying and pasting it onto a design and then previewing that design in the browser because it will look different with the design behind it you'll have a better sense of how dark that is so that looks pretty good to me that's uh, it's dark but you can tell that there's content back there uh, people can tell that they've landed in the right place because uh, that's another thing if you block out the background completely people might not know if they're in the right place or not and they'll hit the back button and that increases what we call your bounce rate and your bounce rate is how many people leave without looking around uh, it's it pretty much judges your web page in terms of uh, quality in terms of how it grabs people's attention so uh, for those of you who aren't using Google Analytics I recommend using Google Analytics to uh, monitor your bounce rate and to see how you're retaining your viewership because this is one of those things that can increase your bounce rate and that is not a good thing so now that we've set that uh, sort of uh, container fill that browser fill uh, and we've got our background color set we're pretty much ready to paste in our design elements now you want to make sure you're in here if I click outside and then click once on this composition I'm not inside it yet I need to click two more times to get inside three clicks total and now I'm ready to hit paste and when I hit paste I'm pasting the wrong thing because I copied the wrong thing so that's my bad I uh, didn't plan on that so I'm gonna go back to the page where I had designed this and I'm gonna copy these things again because uh, I threw myself off there so let's go back in and uh, again one two three clicks to get inside the composition command V for paste that's control V if you're on a PC make sure this is all centered up it looks about centered to me uh, so I'm gonna run with that I'm gonna see how that looks now I'm going to hit shift command E to preview in the browser you could also go file and you can choose to preview in the browser here preview page in browser there's also a preview site in browser it takes longer it renders every web page out of your entire site uh, I like to do preview page in browser when I'm doing something simple like this so here we have it looks good so now let's copy and paste the whole thing I'm gonna select it by clicking on it once uh, and if you're inside by accident if you see that you have individual elements selected click away click outside on another part of the page and then click back on it and command C for copy so we'll come back over here we'll paste it on a functioning page and we'll preview in the browser takes a moment and here we have it it looks good and it is functional looks like I have a, a little alignment issue there that I might have to resolve uh, my text alignments not quite right but uh, you get the idea it is it is good to go it is ready for us to start uh, really capturing people's email addresses and if they don't want to see it they can click on the X they can click away so it's really easy to bail on that so hopefully it won't increase your bounce rate too much uh, but again make sure people feel like they're in the right place make sure you brand this box uh, to match your website and make people feel like they're in the right place so cool and uh, that that first the first page that I showed you guys that contained the finish light box which looked something like this I'm gonna put this on museresources.com as a downloadable widget for you guys so if you'd rather not do it all from scratch if you'd rather start from this and then modify it or if you just want to see how it's put together in case I did something differently from you guys then it will be there on museresources.com for free of course for you guys to download and uh, if you like this tutorial and you want to keep them coming you want me to keep them coming just please subscribe if you haven't already and I will keep them coming lots of good stuff on the way alright guys enjoy